guys, it's Sam, and this is my spoiler-free review of None of the Night by Tamsin Muir. This is the third book in the Locked Tomb series. I will probably include spoilers for the first two books in this, so do not watch this if you haven't read those and you don't want spoilers, but there will be no spoilers for this book. I will link my previous reviews for the other two books on the screen. So this is the third book and picks up after the bonkers events of the second book that was very confusing for a lot of people, including myself. This book, uh... I know even less of what went on, and I had to like watch videos on TikTok of people who read this book like three times when it first came out to dissect all the little pieces in order to get this. So just just know that going in. If you didn't like Gideon, which I didn't find Gideon confusing at all. If you didn't like Gideon the Ninth, and you're watching this to be like, should I continue? I didn't find Gideon confusing at all. So if you found Gideon confusing, you're not going to do well. If you found Harrow confusing, which I did as well, but I got most of it. And you're like, does it get less confusing? No. No, it doesn't. So this book picks up after the events of Harrow, follows the main character of Nona. Who is she? We don't know. She has Harrow's body. That's made abundantly clear to us. We don't know whose soul is in there. Is it Gideon? Is it Harrow? Is it Harrow and Gideon? Is it someone else? We don't know, and neither does anybody else. And she is essentially being cared for by some other characters that we've already run into uh, on a planet where a resurrection beast is kind of like chilling, and she doesn't know anything about her past. They don't know who she is, and it's kind of a little side quest following the life of Nona until like the end. So, with that being said, and with me admitting that there are things I didn't know. Let's get into this. First off, I feel like I should preface this. There are a number of different fans of this series and there are people who critically analyze every line of the series and have charts and put things together. That is not me. I deeply value those people. I tend to read this for like d just what it is and I hope that my brain absorbs the key bits and I hope that by the end of the series, it's all gonna come together for me, but I tend to just enjoy the ride, okay? So just know that going in for me and how I experience this. First, I'm gonna talk about the world building. The world building in here was not my favorite just because I loved the like world and the atmosphere of the first two books. The first two books with like the closed circle mystery in Gideon and the like space bone stuff in Harrow was much cooler. This is sort of like, slice of life feeling in a lot of ways. They're on a planet and they're, everyone's kind of scared of like what they call zombies and necromancers. Um, and like, but you don't really get to see a lot of that. A lot of the freaky bone shit, which is what I am in the series for is not here because again, Nona doesn't know who she is. We don't know who she is. We don't know what ability she has. So the necromancy is like a little off the table. Like necromancy things are happening, but no one's really an active participant in the freaky bone shit stuff that I love about this series. So I will say, world building wise, I don't love it. Um, and I don't really feel like we, maybe I just didn't learn uh, about new things really. It's like a lot of the same and then we didn't get our freaky bone shit, which is what I'm here for. Next one's about our characters. Our main character of Nona is fine. Um, I know some people are like, I think this book is gonna be really polarizing to people. The whole series has been, but I think this one, especially for like existing fans, is gonna be polarizing. No, it's fine. However, I love Gideon and Harrow in particular so much. And a lot of the characters, especially in the first book, so much, and even the second book. And like, we don't really get them. Uh, so like, I'm missing that piece, right? This book feels like a side quest. <laughs> and I'm like, known, known as a sweet baby angel. I don't read the, the series for Sweet Baby Angel, so. Like, this is supposed to be, everyone's a little morally gray, they're doing weird bone shit, and they're lesbians, right? Like, that's why I'm here. So, Nona, fine. She also has this, like, gang of kids that she sort of, like, falls in with because she's like, I wanna go to school, even though she's, like, 19. Anyway, there's, like, this whole thing. There's little kids. No, I never really care a ton about like child characters. Um, again, this all felt like it ties in, but it all feels like side questy type stuff. We do have some other characters that again were present in earlier books. I do like them and what's explored through them, particularly my favorite characters from the earlier books is in this, love, obsessed, obsessed. Um, but otherwise it's like, I miss, I miss my original babies, you know? Lastly, we talk about the plot and the way that, like I just mentioned, I don't quite know entirely what's going on. Again, side quest. There are lots of little tidbits dropped in that if you are an extra analyzer of the text and you wanna reread it and you wanna get all the little get hints and the foreshadowing, the, it's masterfully written, okay? Tamsin Muir's a good writer. 
And the thing is, is like, I'm confused throughout all of these books, but not confused in the way that while I'm reading, I'm confused. I'm just like, I'm able to absorb the words that are on the page, right? I'm not getting tripped up. I'm not confused on what's going on. I'm confused on how it matters and like the hints that are being dropped, if that makes any sense. Her writing is not confusing. How she chooses to convey and not convey things can be confusing. Very much is like a vague Easter egg hint person that you really have to be like taking notes to really get like all of it. And so I will usually get, again, the broad strokes of a thing and then would have to reread it or again, watch critical analysis videos and like theory videos and whatever. That is how I enjoy this series. So for the overarching plot, like the stuff that's on the page, I was mostly, dare I say bored, in a way that I haven't been for the rest of the books. Some people might get mad at me for that. I'm so sorry. It's just not the way that I read the series because it feels like such a side quest and because it's like, how is this gonna tie back in and whatever. Uh, so yeah, most of the book is just that and not really knowing how all this ties together and whatever. Then the last part of the book is really fast paced, really good. My favorite part was like the last fourth, I would say, of the book. Um, Cause then we're tying kind of back into the main stuff. That was good. But overall, my enjoyment of this was less because we didn't have my creepy bone shit. We didn't have the characters that I've loved. And we had some, but like generally speaking, we have this like new character in book three that we're in the head of. Like that is sort of confusing to me. We, again, we, it's, it's asking you to like critically analyze all these things and take notes and have, and I, I don't want to do that. Uh, so yeah, I didn't love this as much as the first two books. I would say this is like 3.75. It's not bad and 3.75 for me purely for like some of that enjoyment stuff going down. It's not a badly written book. I'm not giving up on the series. I'm not disappointed in this. I think the conclusion is still going to be fantastic. I think Tamsin Yer is an excellent writer. This is just not necessarily the journey that I completely wanted to go on. I will be doing a likely very brief uh, spoilery discussion on this because like I said, I don't know what's going on. So that is mostly going to be you guys telling me, I guess, what's going on. But I will talk about like some of the things that just like didn't resonate for me in that video, so I'll link down the screen. But yeah, very much looking forward to the finale and how everything ties together. Because every book in this series, although you can tell it's from the same author, has felt tonally different to me. Uh, so interested how the last book is kind of going to tie everything together and how that one's going to feel. So comment below, let me know what you thought of Nona the Ninth. Thank you all for watching. I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye.